Okay guys, finally, I want to bring you my first take on White Forest Azamina. Now, obviously there is a ban list coming up in a few weeks and we're gonna have to reevaluate the meta and any potential touches to engines our deck happens to be using after that happens. But in the meanwhile, I wanna show you a few different things that I think are very important. The first is, what do these Azamina cards do in a vacuum? The second is, what do these Azamina cards do in combination with even a tiny, 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 teeny, tiny Fiendsmith engine? And why is that way better? And the third thing is, and probably what most of you are here for, is what synergy actually exists between the Azamina cards and the White Forest cards? Now, I will say from the beginning, there isn't a tremendous amount of synergy, but they don't conflict with each other, and there are small niche pieces of synergy that make it worth it to play them together. For example, Tales of the White Forest, which can be played between one and three copies, depending on the version of White Forest you're playing, just requires that you control an illusion or spellcaster. Now, in this version, you will always have a spellcaster in Black Witch or an illusion in basically any of the fusion monsters. So you could potentially play this card at three. However, I am opting for a hand trap build here because of Furos. Remember, we are talking about Rage of the Abyss, so Furos is coming out in the same set as the Azamina cards. Um, also, it is worth mentioning that the Azamina cards have a really, really good resource game, and this actually does matter for White Forest, not just because it complements you cycling through your own cards, but if you have played White Forest before, you will know that, especially if you're hand-trapped, you often find yourself in a position where you're sitting on a Diabell and a Woes, and you have to choose between using the Woes or sending the Woes off of Diabell, and you can't do both because you've run out of spells and traps. So one of the cool things about the Azamina cards is you will almost always have additional spells and traps. So like you can, um, during the end phase of this card is in your graveyard because it was sent there from the spell and trap zone this turn while face up, that's relevant, you can set it. And so you often can just get a free send for the Diabelle. And this actually, I promise you, this may seem like a small thing, this does actually come up. Okay. Uh, I have chosen to play the goatee combo because of Furos. I will show that as well. And uh, Zapper Shrimp is necessary for that. It is also good in, uh, let's say, like if you're not playing Runic, there's certain matchups that can become kind of awkward for you, like Tenpai. If they have field spell access and you don't have a way to get rid of the field spell, you might not have a way to stop the Transcendent Dragon before they go battle phase. Um, but... Having this to pop the field spell or the Diabelle to go into a uh, Chaos Angel or a Goatee, uh, that actually does help a lot in those types of matchups. So I think that's relevant. You could play a larger Fiendsmith engine and adding cards like Sequence and Desiree uh, and Lacrima. And then you'd have to probably take out other cards like Gallant Granite. However, I found that if you are going to be playing the Goatee combo, the Gallant Granite is... I already thought that it was very good because... You want to search the Nib off of the Granite, and you want to search the Veiler off of the uh, White Forest uh, Arciella. And that's good in principle because you're diversifying the locations your interactions come from. Uh, and that's always good in Yu-Gi-Oh! Because then you lose less to individual power cards like Lightning Storm, Evenly Matched, whatever, uh, Dark Ruler. But in this version, if you do go for the Gohi combo, those cards become way better. So I feel like this is actually a pretty solid take on what the extra deck could look like. And I don't feel like I'm missing cards like Desiree right now. It is worth mentioning that Ophelitis does offer some uh, new functionality in that you can special summon out of turn. And this card, Sol, if this card is fusion summoned, you can target a card on the field, send it to the grave. So any card. And it's also good for your resource game because during each standby phase, you can target an Azamina or a Sinful Swells card in your grave, add it to your hand. Um, so I'll, I'll also show something with this here. So anyhow, here is my rough take on the deck right now. I have cut the Sylvie on the Rusia down a little bit. I feel like I want to play more Sylvies because adding in the Sinful Spoils or the Azamina stuff does not increase your normal summons. And I feel like you for sure can play more normal summons. You are cutting the Soldier down to one because there's so little space. Um, maybe it is correct to play one Tails and two Sylvie, but the thing is that Tails is almost always usable because of the rest of your deck. Um, if you weren't playing the, the engraver, this would for sure be a second Sylvie and I would feel a lot better about the normals. But uh, as you'll see, the closed heaven lines are so good with the Azamina cards. There's almost no reason not to play it. Okay, let us start looking at some replays. So 
Uh, first, let me show you what Deception does in a vacuum. So just this card. You contribute a monster from your hand or field, add one Azamina card from your deck to your hand. Okay, so that's what we're gonna be doing. Forget everything else in my hand. Uh, so we activate Deception and we search for the Sacred Azamina. Reveal an Azamina Fusion Monster in your extra deck and send one Sinful, po Slilili, Sinful Spoils card from your hand and or field to the graveyard and special summon it. And that is counted as a Fusion Summon. So this is a Sinful Spoils card. So we activate the Azamina here. Uh, we send the Deception. We bring out the Mu Arcelago or the Azamina Arcelago. I don't know why these names are so crazy. Now this card... When it is summoned, it can add any Sinful Spoils card from our deck to our hand. So we add Wanted, which is a 1 in the OCG, and they're still, you know, searching it off of this. Um, so here we activate the Wanted, we add the Black Witch, we summon the Witch. If you were playing Snake Eyes, you would probably add original Sinful Spoils. Uh, we're obviously not playing that, so we're going to add Deception instead. Uh, which is fine, you know. Now here's the crazy thing. The reason that you would play the Fiendsmith cards is if you turn the Black Witch and the Azamina Arcielago into Closed Heaven, that puts an Azamina card in your graveyard, which means that the Sacred Azamina can shuffle that back to put it back in your hand, and the Fusion Summon part is not once per turn. Now, we just got back a Deception, so we're going to send that Deception, even though it is face down, to bring out the Omni Negate. So, Azamina Silvera... Uh, this says, when your opponent activates a card or effect, quick effect, you contribute this card, so that's the cost, negate the effect. Now, the cool thing about this is your opponent can't just nip Veiler the same way as before. They have to use the Veiler or the Imperm preemptively on the Silvera, because if they wait and they activate Nib, you tribute this as cost, there's no card on the field to Veiler or Imperm. Um, so now, you can do the uh, Requiem line and go into the Necro Quip stuff. And uh, that brings out the Wave Hiking Caesar. So not only is this a good card in general and well positioned currently in this meta, but it works very well with the Silvera because the Nib Veiler or Nib Impern combo is way harder to resolve uh, against these two specific cards. If your opponent activates Imperm or Veiler on Silvera, you can just say, okay, continue. If they have the Nib, it gets negated. If they Imperm or Veiler the Hiking, then you can negate that with the Silvera, and then you still have the two special summon negates on the Wave Hiking. Remember, you still have the Sinful Spoils Banished to Draw in the Grave, and right now I'm only showing you what a single Deception does, but obviously, if you have cards like Tails, you do control Illusion Monster, and you can do the full White Forest combo from here. So that is the first combo with Deception. Now, why would you want to play Ophelitis? Okay, if you start with uh, Wanted, you search for the Witch. The Witch discards whatever. You bring out Deception. Deception tributes the Witch. Uh, here you get Ophelitis. Now, I'm just passing my turn because I just want to show you what this card does. So uh, the opponent summons a monster or whatever. And here we want to use our Send. So during the main phase, we reveal the fusion monster. It's exactly the same thing. And we send a Sinful Spoils card and we get to fusion summon that. So here we send the Deception to bring out the Sol, which is a trigger effect on fusion summon to target a card on the field and send it to the graveyard. So there's the pop there. Um, now, the cool thing is that because we sent the Deception while it was face up, in the end phase, it resets itself. Oops, I just hit my mic. And then in the standby phase, uh, this card targets an Azamina or Sinful Spoils card in the grave and adds it to the hand. Uh, so that's cool. Also, I just want to show you that Ophelitis, the, the other effect that's different to Sacred Azamina is let's say that we have an Azamina card in the graveyard. Okay, we can banish Ophelitis to special summon an Azamina card. Um, just remember that this card only gets to send when it is fusion summoned, but the uh, Silvera card, this has the Omni Negate no matter how it was summoned. It's just that it's once per turn. Um, and uh, this card also only gets it on Fusion Summon, but, but this card, uh, it doesn't care. So that, that, that's a super relevant thing to remember. Okay, now I want to show you the Mulcharmy Fluor Ross card. Um, so probably most people will be main decking this. Uh, let's say you go first and you've drawn this card. You have to control no cards to resolve it, so obviously it's dead right now. But let's say that we go into a standard Diabelle ladder, okay? Uh, so here we're just doing some level modulation, whatever. It doesn't matter how we do this combo. I just want to show you that um, if you make Diabelle, and, and this is super relevant here, and this is one of the reasons why I feel like Gallant Granite is so good, especially with this combo, is we have searched a nib, okay, off of the Granite, and you can search the nib off of the White Forest Arciella. Okay, so you have the Nib Veiler combo in hand. Now your opponent goes to play. 
Okay, they activate a card. We chain uh, the Diabelle. We bring out the Zapper Shrimp. Now we use the Zapper Shrimp's effect to sink into the Goatee of the Deep Beyond. Okay, and this card will banish all cards. So now that we control no cards, we can activate Fuara. So let's say the opponent plays through our Goatee of the Deep Beyond, which, you know, if they're playing a really good deck, obviously, you know, a good deck isn't just going to lose to a single interaction, even though we've banished all cards on the field. Um, so we activate Fuara. So now every time they summon from the deck or the extra deck, we're going to draw a card, which is almost like a pseudo win condition. Because they have a battle phase right now, I feel like the hand trap build is a little bit better because obviously drawing into hand traps is good. And we already searched Nib Valor, like, or, or you can in your combo, if you want, you can search for the Nib and the Valor. So they have to play through the Banish Everything. They have to then play through the Fuoros, uh, if we choose to use it at that moment. And then they have to play through the Nib Valor. You do have some options of how you want to sequence this. Like, if you think there's no way they play through everything and you don't just want to use all of your cards, you could hold the Nib and maybe Valor to see if there's like a way that they can special summon from the hand or deck, and you haven't revealed the Fuoros yet, and uh, then when they activate a card that would special from, you know, deck or extra deck, you can then chain the Fuoros or whatever, so, you know, there, there are different ways of doing that, so I feel like that's, that's pretty good. Um, okay, now let me show you uh, just a couple more things. Um, if you open both the, uh, let's say like Azamina cards or access to the Azamina cards and the White Forest stuff. Here we're starting with Wanted. We bring out the Witch, which gives us the Deception. Deception uh, will tribute a monster from hand or field to give us the Sacred Azamina. And this brings out the Rhea Silvera. Now the difference here between starting with Witch off of the Azamina Arcielago is that you don't have two monsters to turn into the Closed Heaven yet. And obviously, you're not going to give up your Omni Negate just to make a Closed Heaven that would lose to an Ash. So, we summon the Sylvie here. We've used our normal. We add the Tails. Uh, the, the reason why I feel like you like it's fine that you don't play three Tails, even though you are on like multiple ways to get into Spellcasters and Illusions to make this live, is if you search the... Or sorry, if you've hard drawn the Tails and you search the Sylvie, the Sylvie has to search the Woes, because you can't use Tails after that. Whereas if you search the Tails off of the Sylvie, you know, you are you can just then get the, the LZ, and you don't need to use your normal. I feel like that's, it's less awkward if you've searched the Tails than if you've hard drawn it, but you know, it can be, it can be whatever. Here we activate the box, because we've gotten the LZ, and we special the LZ, and uh, what you do after this, you know, there's obviously like a lot of flexibility. I just want to show you that um, there are lots of different ways to get to the same outcome, no matter how you've started. So like, for example, you can still go for the Gallant Granite play here. And now you have a uh, Gallant Granite and you have Black Witch, which is a level seven. So like the levels are a little bit awkward. And that means that these can become like a little knight very easily. You could just make a little knight here. Um, or after you have searched the nib, you can then go, in, go into Closed Heaven because you haven't used any of these cards yet. And then you can go into the Necro Quip line and uh, now you will have um, the Wave Hiking Caesar and the Only Negate and the Diabelle and the Woes um, and you have this, you, you know, whatever you have in your hand. Um, I also just want to show you, obviously you're not going to link your Omni Negate off into a Little Knight, but I just want to show you if you have used the, the Rio Silvera, or for some reason it has gone to your grave, okay? So I've just put it in my grave by linking into the Little Knight. You can um, use Sacred Azamina, shuffle it back into your deck to add this card to your hand. And if you've gotten access to another Deception, which is very easy, you can add it back off of Diabelle or could you, you know, drawn or search another one or whatever. Um, you can just bring it out again. And then you can use it on your opponent's turn. So, you know, th these cards are super good. And then uh, because you send this while it was face up, you get to reset it in the end phase. So, you know. Uh, last thing I will show you is um, if you're starting with uh, Deception instead, and uh, you know, maybe you've drawn, you've hard drawn Tails or you have some other access to the White Forest stuff. Um, you go into the Mu Arcielago to search the Wanted, which gives you the Witch, and you can special summon the Witch. Uh, now, obviously here, you don't wanna just like turn these into a closed heaven and then turn off your Tails because you could still lose to an Ash or whatever, and then the Tails is dead in hand. So um, here, I'm just gonna activate the Tails because I have an Illusion and Spellcaster, so I search my normal summon. Now I go into the uh, Closed Heaven. I'm just, I'm just showing you different ways of approaching this. Obviously, you could do like different types of stuff. 
Um, uh, here I will bring out the Rhea Silvera before I have gone into Requiem because I don't want to get ashed on it. And we do that same Necro Equip line. And so here you can see that uh, you make the Wave Hiking and the Omni Negate in the Azamina Silvera before you have even Normal Summoned or used the single White Forest card. And um, here is a uh, mistake, I think, because I can't go back in the replay to double check. You don't want to send the Deception from your hand. You always want to activate it on the field so that it is face up when it leaves. So that in the end phase, if it's still in the grave, because you haven't added it back off of D-Bell or whatever, that it will reset itself and you have that for the crackback. Um, so here we search for the woes off of the uh, Sylvie. We go into the Ar Arciella, the White Forest Arciella. Uh, so we set the woes, we bring back the that card. And uh, in this case, I'm Diabelle adding back the Tails. Um, you, depending on the situation, if you, if you can't set the Sinful Spoils of Deception back off its own effect, um, you may choose between resetting Tails versus Deception because they do different things. Um, yeah. Uh, and so then... Here, here's the re the reset deception. So we had it off its own effect. So obviously, like if you can do that, then adding tails is probably better. But you you won't always be able to do that. Um, and so now you have the the Diabel with a woes that you don't have to send off of Diabel because you've gotten <clears throat> a deception that you will either send off the Diabel or if you have something really good to send like a tails, this will be for follow up. Um, and then you know I've shown you before that the Nib Veiler combo is searchable. So you have. Uh, interruptions in the monster zone, you have interruptions in the spell and trap zone, you have interruptions in the hand, you don't have interruptions in the grave, um, unless you are playing Ophelitis, and you Ophelitis bring back the Rhea Silvera in your opponent's turn, and you have that uh, on the negate, but you can only do that in your own turn. Um, so uh, those are the replays that I wanted to show. If we just briefly look over this deck real quick, I feel like uh, I don't think that this is perfectly optimal in terms of how I want it. I think that the main thing that I feel like I'm lacking right now is the copies of Sylvie. I don't feel like this deck is missing prosperity, while I do often feel that in other versions of this deck, but I feel like this has so many good engines that are so consistent that all work well with your resource economy that you don't feel like you need the prosperity and you have additional draws off the Fuoros, which is not dead, even if you go first because of the Deep Beyond combo. Um, but I do feel like, I do feel like you do, you do want more Sylvie and I don't know, I don't know yet. I haven't tested enough to say if I would rather Sylvie off of t over tails in terms of the ratios. I kind of like hard drawing the tails, as I've mentioned, because of the spellcaster and illusion access. Um, so, and I also don't want to go below 15 hand traps right here. But this card is too broken to cut. You have to play at least one Sacred Azamina, um, even playing the Minimum Witch. And this is the broken card, is the Wanted. Like, you could argue, why not play one Wanted because it's searchable? But the thing is, why would you not want to draw this card? You know, like, e even if you drew this card and Deception, that's fine. You know, you, you, can, you can still access both engines. There's, there's no downside to drawing multiple cards especially because there's some functional redundancy here where you may activate wanted and maybe be like, oh, I got to ash this. Or, or, or you may want it for the, the witch. And you know, if, you've, if you've seen the hand trap matches of, of Snake Eyes, they may be like, okay, well, I have multiple hand traps. I need to imperm this witch. And then you still have the deception in hand. <clears throat> so you know, I, I don't think there's any reason to cut down on the ratios of the most broken cards. And the thing about the Fiendsmith stuff is like, obviously, if you're on a budget, you're probably not going to play these cards. Although, if we're being realistic, knowing Konami, these Azamina cards are probably going to be expensive too. So I don't know how budget this is going to be. But I feel like the the Closed Heaven, specifically access through Closed Heaven, I don't just mean the normal Fiendsmith stuff, but specifically Closed Heaven, putting the Azamina Arcelago in the grave to recycle the Sacred Azamina is so good that I feel like it's just correct to play this. Um, if you weren't playing Fiendsmith cards, obviously these four would be something else. You would probably play the Sol in the main. Maybe you would uh, main the Ophelitis. And um, you, you, could, you could have like more flex spots in here, like a Draco Berserker, another Chaos Angel, or a Satellite Warrior. Or uh, I'd probably main the Baguska, maybe Dweller. So yeah, there, there are options here. I'm not saying this is the perfect build. Um, I do want to fit at least one more Sylvie in here. I could potentially consider going to 41 and playing the second Sylvie, uh, but those are my thoughts for now. Uh, thanks for watching. Uh, if you want to subscribe, subscribe. If you don't, then don't.